Hey everybody, I am your psychic Christine Wallace and I just want to thank you for being here and watching my YouTube channel. How nice. <laughs> okay, so hopefully uh, you've heard of me, you've seen my reviews, you checked out my website, or maybe you're a subscriber or just some random person that ran across my channel, but whichever way uh, you're going, I, I do offer multiple services as a psychic healer, demonologist. Now, yeah, I said that scary word, demonologist. So what does that mean? That means that I am the person or one of the people who help others get rid of negative spirits, bad energies, blockages that might be interfering with the normal process of your life moving forward. And you'll be able to check out those services on my website if you feel that this is something that you're going through in your life. Um, so moving forward, I am here. We're going to answer some questions that have been sent to me. And we're going to answer these questions here on YouTube uh, today. So let's see, where should I begin? I have this up on my computer. So the first question I have here is, why can't I get over my ex after 10 years? Whoa, 10 years is a long time because I have usually found that the max that it usually has taken people, and I've been doing this for over 35 years, to get over someone is, and I mean like a really bad breakup, is approximately three years, uh, give or take a year or so. But uh, 10 years is a long time. So what that is saying to me is that there is some kind of soulmate connection or a past life connection that is preventing you from recovering from this ex. Um, let me see. So that, that could be one of the reasons. I, I believe that that's what it is because after 10 years, you know, you kind of move on. Um, and I also feel psychically that there's something that you're regretting from that breakup, like something that you feel that you did to bring that breakup about. And obviously, you feel regret, and this is preventing you from making progress or moving forward. So what I'm feeling about that is that you're caught up in some kind of karmic thing going on, and uh, I feel that the right thing for you to do to kind of help you through this is to definitely have a reading done to get more in depth and to help you to either recover or clear up this karma i'm sure that something can be done i don't feel that you need to really be stuck in that predicament any longer something is clearly off so, okay, so I hope that helped to answer your question. And the next question that I'm seeing here is, why does my ex-boyfriend want to stay friends but doesn't want to date me? I broke up with him and regretted it the next day. Okay, so why does my ex-boyfriend want to stay friends but doesn't want to date you? So what's happening over there is your ex-boyfriend is finding that it's easier to be in a friendship with you because the expectations that you have of him as a boyfriend are more than what he's able to handle. I can feel that he feels that you get super demanding when your relationship has the title of boyfriend, girlfriend. He becomes overwhelmed. He finds himself under too much pressure in this relationship, but 
he still has very intense feelings for you. Basically, I do feel that he loves you and he's kind of like stalling, hoping that the situation can improve as a friendship and that you would have more acceptance of him for who he is, not something that you want to make out of him. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you. So that's why, you know, when, when we attach a title to relationships, we have a certain amount of expectations. As a friend, you know, we have different expectations. And considering that you did the breaking up, he's kind of hiding behind this friendship thing just to keep the pressure off of himself. So basically, he still wants to be in a relationship. And on some level, I guess you still are. And eventually, you know, this is the future I'm going into now. Eventually, you will be together again and in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. So in a way, he's kind of, sort of, kind of right for doing things this way. So you can kind of grow together more, if that makes sense. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. If not, you know, you're free to call me directly or email me. So let's see, what else do we have here? What is a woman called who likes older men? I don't know, and I'm not ready to attach any name to that either. <laughs> okay, next question. Why do good girls fall for bad boys? Okay, so this is a question that has been going on from the beginning of time, I guess. Why do good girls fall for bad boys? Okay, so there are a couple of answers to that question depending on who you ask. So because good girls are good, sometimes they struggle standing up for themselves and kind of lean on the bad boy for him to be the bad guy so she can remain the good girl. <laughs> So that's one reason. And if you go back into like history or whatever, I actually read something about this years ago, kind of like a caveman sort of thing, that because men are physically bigger than us as women, I mean, this is like caveman times, because men are physically bigger, it kind of makes us who are smaller than a man feel safer or that he can protect us somehow. Uh, but being that, you know, the world is not so much like that anymore, we still have this natural instinct to feel that way. You know, he's my protector. So we want to be safe from lions and tigers and monsters. Uh, like I said, it's kind of an instinctive thing from caveman era. And I guess it's, it's just something, it's an instinct. That's why, another reason. Uh, so I guess I gave two answers to that question. So that's my belief on that. That I don't believe really requires a reading. That's just kind of like a question in general. So let me see. Okay, so this is the end of the question stuff. Uh, these are really cool questions. I like them a lot. And if you have any questions, any of my viewers, just like I said, go ahead to my story and send in some questions. Or if you want to do a... Uh, uh, on, on Your Story Matters, actually, that's the title of the page on my website. My website, by the way, is psychicreadingexpert.com. And there you're going to see uh, an icon that says Your Story Matters. So you can go ahead there, send in your questions, and we can also do a recorded reading, and it can go up on my podcast. 
So the reason that I want to do that is because I believe that if we share our stories with one another, that we can all learn something. For example, answering these few questions here on YouTube, uh, some people may have had similar questions or, go, or are going through something similar and were able to get their answers as well. So this is kind of like a paying it forward sort of thing that I'm trying to establish with the your story matters. And the person, of course, that's telling their story is getting a tremendous amount of relief as well by being able to share it. And it's a little bit different. This experience is going to be a little bit different than what you would have if, if I were doing like a one-on-one -on -one reading with you. Because when I do readings for people, I don't ask questions. There are no questions. I just tell you what it is that I see. Okay? And... But through the Your Story Matters, because we want to share the story, you're going to be required to give like a description of your circumstances. And then from that point, I'll help to lead you, guide you in the right direction and be able to give you the future predictions. And there are no, there's no charge for that, by the way. So you can feel free to go ahead again. Like I'm, I said, psychicreadingexpert.com. Go to Your Story Matters. You can also check out, you know, all of the different services that I have to offer. Uh, they're really cool. I added some new stuff. Let me see. What else? If you are experiencing anxiety or anything like that going on in your life, if you go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter, you're going to get like a free ebook in exchange that uh, you'll be able to use to help you with any with an anxiety issue that you're experiencing so that I also felt would be extremely helpful to a lot of the people that also come to have psychic readings uh, let's see what else can we do here so we're gonna do a little shuffle with these tarot cards right now and You'll understand what I'm trying to do here in about a minute. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is just go ahead and randomly pick a card. So this card over here, it's saying, I don't know if you can see, it's probably backwards. It says, Big Happy Changes. So this was the first card that I pulled. So someone there, out there in YouTube land, is on the cusp of some big happy changes okay so the new year is going to bring something really positive your way coming soon but psychically i do feel that you're stressing about it and very uneasy because you're in a transitional period of time right now and you're waiting on something that you've been working toward for a really long time and you you're just right on the cusp of it coming to fruition but like I said there's something there that's stressing you that's worrying you and if that if this card applies to you just feel free to reach out to me and if you want to have a reading done I'm here to do that for you so thank you so much for being here and please mark your calendar New Year's Day January 1st at 4 p.m. Alexa, stop. Oh. Sorry about that interruption. <laughs> so, no, this is not all professionally set up. It's just you and I, or all of you and I. Um, what was I saying? January 1st at 4 p.m. New York time. I will be going live here on YouTube, and we are going to do a New Year forecast. And we're also going to do some Q&A here on YouTube live. So be there. And it would probably be a really good idea to go to my website, subscribe to my newsletter, so that way you can be able to have a notification as to 
you know, when I do go live or subscribe to this YouTube channel here uh, so that you can get the notifications. So yeah, the new year is coming and that means new beginnings, uh, making a new start. Uh, some of us are wanting to ex extend the good energy that we've been going through. We want more of that. We don't want things to change. And then there are some of us who want everything to change, who are just, you know, have been stagnant. So whatever it is, this is a great time to have a reading done to kind of help you uh, with that and tell you about your future. So the, the really good thing about having a reading done is that by knowing what's what your present circumstances are by having a really good understanding about your present and then going into your future and thinking about your own goals and what the future has in store you have the opportunity or an advantage to avoid problems to be able to have more control over your circumstances you know knowledge is power so by having a psychic reading done what you're gaining is more knowledge so again thank you so much for being here and i want to wish all of you the best of luck thank you so much namaste